video. Um, before you uh, start, you're going to need a pen and paper because I'm going to pause the video. Well, I'm going to ask you to pause the video uh, multiple times to write stuff down. So if you haven't got there yet, go get it and then come back. So first thing I want you to do is, um, as a way of revising some of the definitions we talked about last time, um, I'd like you to, on your pen and paper, uh, with your uh, pen and paper, I'd like you to write down the definitions for those words there. Um, pause the video so you've got enough time, um, and then click play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, so here are the answers for them. Um, what I'd like you to do is, if you didn't manage to get all of them, I'd like you to take five minutes, three minutes, whatever you need to upgrade them, um, and just make sure you've got them right. Um, and if you weren't remembering them very well, maybe a bit of look, cover, right check would be useful as well. Um, there are a couple of things I want to talk about within these definitions, um, areas where students quite often get confused, are the differences between um, a population, oh, uh, population and a community. So the difference between a population and a community is quite subtle, but it does make a big difference. And the difference being here is a population is when you're talking about members of the same species as a community is when we're talking about different species. So quite a subtle difference in terms of the language we use, but actually quite a key difference in um, what they mean. So I'll give you an example. We might talk about a population of deer. So just one species in a forest in that habitat, that's one population of deer. However, if we had something like we had uh, some deer, we also had maybe some foxes, in the same place. Maybe there were different types of trees. Um, maybe there were things like rabbits as well. We've suddenly got more than one species. We don't just have deer anymore. We've now got deer, foxes, trees, rabbits, etc. That now becomes a community because again, we've got different species rather than just the same. Subtle difference, but really important that you know those are two different types of definition, okay? Um, the other thing I want to talk about um, is competition. And again, you're going to need to write down a couple of these definitions um, on your pen and paper, so have that ready. Um, within competition, um, there are two types. So there is inter-specific competition and there is intraspecific competition. So a very subtle difference, inter versus intra, but they do mean different things. Um, Inter-specific competition is when you have competition between different species. So the key bit here is you have different species. Um, and I'll show you an example of that very shortly. Um, whereas intra-specific competition, this is when you're gonna get competition within a species within the same species. Okay, so inter-specific different species, intra-specific uh, within the same species. And we'll go through a couple of examples of what that looks like. So um, if I just get rid of this for a second. So here we have an example of, uh, we've got a lion over here and we've got a few hyena and they'll be in competition for food. So the lions probably killed something and the hyenas are trying to still compete for that food. Um, we have two species here. Okay, We have one species here in the lion and then we have two species as the hyena. So because we have two different species, this has to be inter-specific. Because remember, inter is between different species. If we take another example, so here we have um, two types of antelope. Um, two types of male antelope, and they'll be fighting over um, access to different females or access to different um, resources. Because they are the same species, we've got a species of elk, a uh, species of antelope here, but we've got the same species over here. Therefore, this has to be inter-specific because it's between the same. Okay, subtle difference, but definitely worth knowing that they are different. Okay, and then last bit we're going to go through. Um, is we've got uh, talk about competition, talk about habitat, um, is the difference between biotic and abiotic. So biotic, as you can see, is living elements, whereas abiotic is uh, non-living elements. And what I'd like you to do, again, pause the video here, and I'd like you to come up with uh, two biotic factors and two abiotic factors, please.
Okay, so resume the video there. Um, there's loads and loads you could have gone for. Um, I'm just going to go through a few so you are aware. So, um, for example, if we go to Bartik factors first, um, we just talked about one. So competition is an example. Uh, you could have a uh, Bartik factor would also be something like predation. Um, it might also be the uh, availability of food, etc. So there's loads, but I'm not going to go into more detail. I'll just do three for now. Um, then let's also do abiotic um, factors. So these are non-living elements. So these things that don't actually live. So uh, examples of this would be things like pollution, uh, maybe the temperature, um, things like the availability of water, and sunlight, etc. Again, loads and loads. I'll just do three for now. But quite a few examples. It's worth knowing a few because you might be asked to go through those. So uh, next thing we're going to talk about is going to be uh, food chains. And um, before I continue, um, just make sure that you are familiar with these terms in bold. So top predator, consumer, carnivore, herbivore, and producer. If you are familiar with them, we can just carry on. If you're not, go back to your notes from before the Easter break and just check you know what they mean. I just want to mention uh, two things within the food chains. Um, I just want to talk about the fact that producers um, are always going to be plants. Um, you need to know that they're always going to be plants because um, you might be asked to explain how uh, energy is transferred through a food chain and plants are able to get this energy from the sun and they use this through photosynthesis and then they can use this to make their own food and, and build up their, their structures. Uh, and then that energy is then eaten by things like the mayfly larva or the pond snails or things like that. Okay. The second thing I want to talk about in food chains is just how it illustrates this idea of interdependence. So interdependence, as you can remember from our definitions way at the beginning, um, is that all organisms, let me just try to highlight this, sorry, there we go, uh, all organisms depend on each other. It's this idea that everything is linked. Well, food chains are a great way, great way of showing that is because there are all these different links represented by the different arrows. So all these different arrows are representing some form of link. Um, if we just take one organism, for example, so let's just take the stickleback to start with. The stickleback is dependent on uh, mayfly larvae. Um, it's dependent on mayfly larvae as one of its food sources, but it's also dependent on pond snail. So there's one example of interdependence. However, there is also a dependent relationship between the stickleback and something like the dragonfly larvae, because they are actually in competition for the same food. There's an example of interspecific competition between the stickleback and the mayfly, uh, sorry, and the dragonfly larvae. Okay, uh, last bit, and then I'm gonna let you um, get on with the rest of the lesson, is parasitism and mutualism. Um, just so you're aware, these are the definitions. So parasitism, uh, we have the idea that the host is harmed and the parasite benefits. And then mutualism, we have the idea that both organisms in the relationship are benefiting. Um, one thing I just want to draw your attention to is the fact that we talk about the host being harmed. We don't talk about the host being killed. Because if the host were to be killed, then that would be an example of predation, not parasitism. Um, get your pen and paper ready, because I've got a few examples. And what I want you to do is tell me what is going on in each one. So pause the video here, work out whether you think this is an example of parasitism and mutualism. And also have a think of why you know that. Okay, so this is an example of mutualism. And the reason being is in this example, we have a wrasse fish and this is feeding um, off of the uh, kind of the lice and some of the, the kind of leftover food inside the shark's mouth. So this one here is going to benefit. That's the first thing. And then our shark, in this case, is actually getting its mouth cleaned. So all that kind of nasty stuff that might cause disease and and, and kind of bad health of the shark is, is being removed. So the shark is also benefiting, therefore we have mutualism. Cool, one more example. So again, have a look at this one. Pause the video, decide whether you think it's parasitism or mutualism, and then come up with the reason why as well. Right, so in this example, we have a tick and a human. Um, in this example, the tick is going to suck the blood from the human, so the tick is going to get a uh, benefit. However, the human is going to end up being harmed. They're not going to be killed by the tick, but they are going to be harmed. So this, therefore, has to be an example of parasitism. And last one, just to highlight a point I made earlier, 
is we have a uh, fox here eating um, some sort of rabbit or possum or, or something like that. Um, have a think, what do you think this type of relationship is? Okay, so in this example, um, we have a fox here, which is benefiting because the fox is getting a food source. Um, however, this um, possum or rabbit, whatever it is, is actually end up being killed. So because it's killed and not harmed, this can't be parasitism. It can't be mutualism because it's definitely not uh, having a mutual benefit. So this actually is going to be an example of predation. Okay, just to highlight that point I made earlier that if we are talking about um, parasitism, it's harmed and not killed because this organism has actually ended up being killed, it's going to be predation. Okay, so last thing for you to do is to complete your quiz on Show My Homework. Uh, go to your Show My Homework, um, it'll be on there. You can complete it all within there. Um, any questions, let your teachers know and they will be able to point you.